Now today we'll be showing on how to replace a transmission fluid pressure switch. Let me show you where it's located on the vehicle. Now you have a couple of options on how to get access to this. Option one is removing the battery and the battery tray, which I'll show you in a moment. The other option is removing the splash shield. And if you need a guide on that, I'll include a link in the description box below showing you on how you can do that. But that being said, once you get clear access to it then we can go ahead and remove it now looking all the way in the bottom here right there is where the switch is located so let's go ahead and remove it I'll also give you some pointers on how to find this for your specific vehicle and then these are just two 10 millimeter <clears throat> 10 millimeter fasteners this looks a little bit bigger let me grab a 12 And then this is just the battery hold down tray. A couple of 10 millimeter fasteners. And then there's typically a plastic under tray. This has the battery looped into it. There we go. Now underneath the battery, is the metal battery tray so we have that's a 10 millimeter fastener two tens these are 12s and then there's one sneaking on the side here and then we'll be able to remove this and get clear access to all the sensors in fact Now to get better access to this pressure switch, you just want to clean up any other sensors or harness connectors that may be in the way. So right here, of course, is the harness connector. And on the bottom, right down here, there's a tab. So you just press on the tab. If I did that a little too quick, again, press on the tab, six o'clock position in this case, pull back, okay? And again, because we'll be using a wrench, or in this case, we could also use a socket, and a ratchet I'm just going to remove this connector as well now if you need a guide on how to find the pressure switch on your specific vehicle option one is to do a Google image search and a lot of times you can quickly dig up where the sensor lives specifically with your vehicle or on your vehicle option two is to purchase a repair manual specific for your vehicle a lot of times you can purchase them online or find them for free and option three is to visit a forum that deals specifically with your vehicle and you, you'll tend to find someone that just knows the vehicle inside and out. So as you can see right here again is where the switch is located a couple of options on how to remove this. The first thing is you want to make sure you have the right size for example this is a 7 8 of an inch wrench as you can see but look at the play. Now this probably would work but this being 13 years old you don't want to take any chances you don't want to strip this out. Of course you do not want to turn where the harness connector lives, okay? Option two is you can use an adjustable wrench. Let me just make sure you guys can see this, okay. An adjustable wrench, find the uh, correct size, which I did off camera, if I could just find, there we go, something like that, and then just give it a good tug. Option three, if you can do it, if in this case we have enough room, this is a 22 millimeter socket, place it over the end, and a really good connection. Now, how, how do I know in this case, this is 22 millimeters. And if you take a look at the adjustable wrench, the correct size is right on 22. So if you don't have a number of sockets and you're sort of scared to use an adjustable wrench, you can also do something like this. Okay, I'm going to use the adjustable wrench. I'm perfectly happy with that. Now, these are one of these uh, sensors that, or pressure switches, I should, I should say. It's one of these things that you cannot test. Uh, unless you have a very sophisticated scan tool. So if you're familiar with our videos, I tend to show on how to test a lot of these things with a multimeter, sometimes using an external battery. In this case, it's just one of these things. If you get a trouble code, uh, most likely you, you can just replace the sensor with a pressure switch in this case, and that's it. Now that being said, some symptoms, let me just show you what this looks like. Some symptoms 
if this is starting to go or you're having problems certainly is harsh shifting for sure sometimes in this case the transmission won't upshift the vehicle may go into limp mode but it's very very simple and easy to uh, remove and then you just get your new switch reinstall it now in my case I don't have an engine code or trouble code I'm just showing on how to do this don't over tighten it and that's it now if you do have a trouble code with your specific vehicle I'll quickly show you on how you can go ahead and delete that then of course the very last step is to erase any engine codes you may have or trouble codes if you don't have a scan tool you can always go to a local auto parts store if you are uh, looking to purchase one which is nice to have if you plan on doing your own auto repair I'll include this one that uh, I purchased off Amazon it can read trouble codes not only for the engine the transmission the airbags and the ABS so it's a nice system it's not too expensive but ultimately you would just go down to here and you would erase any codes in here and that's it so I'll just take it for a quick test drive make sure everything is okay and we're in good shape thank you for watching and we'll see you next time